Learning new details this afternoon about the Wagner Group rebellion in Russia. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News that the leader of the mercenary group, Evgeny Prigozhin, had conversations with top Russian military officers and other leaders in Moscow before the mutiny, possibly seeking their help in the uprising. Now, Kremlin officials call those allegations gossip. Patrick Riebel is joining us now from Zaporizhia, Ukraine. And Patrick, what do we know about this general, one of the Russian military officers that Prigozhin reportedly spoke with before his march? I can, yeah. I mean, we know General Surovikin well here because he was Russia's overall commander um, in Ukraine between last fall and January when he was removed. Um, he was nicknamed General Armageddon, and he was the architect of Russia's bombing campaign of Ukraine's energy grid. He also established fortifications um, south of here, which is known as the Surovikin Line, in which Ukraine is right now launching its counteroffensive to try and break through. In general, he was seen as a more effective commander, but most importantly, he was also seen as close to Yevgeny Prigozhin, and Prigozhin had actually lobbied for him to become Russia's commander-in-chief, and then also had been celebrated when he was, and actually when he was removed in January, there was speculation that was because it was deemed that Surovikin was too close to Prigozhin. Um, but having said that, over the weekend when the, when the coup began, Surovikin very quickly a video was put out where he denounced the coup and was... Um, where he denounced the coup and, and called for Wagner fighters to return to base. We haven't seen him since then, and so the question is, what has happened to him? Of course, there's a possibility that the U.S. here is trying just to sow dissent um, among Russia by putting out this idea that Surovikin was aware of the coup before it took place. But certainly, um, if it was true, it would, be, it would suggest major dissent within the Russian ranks. Certainly. And how is this impacting the war in Ukraine and the counteroffensive currently underway? Yes, yeah, so the Ukrainian officials that we spoke to over the weekend initially were saying they hoped that they could seize the initiative um, and could try and use ex really exploit the chaos that was obviously among Russia's military leadership at the time. Um, because the coup ended so quickly, that obviously has been more difficult. But I think there has certainly, of course, been a sense that Russia is quite distracted right now. And we have seen in just the last few days some notable um, progress from the Ukrainians in a number of places. We've seen close to Bakhmut that just today they managed to liberate another village. We've seen also that they managed to land a small number of troops on the opposite side of the river across from the liberated city of Kherson. And so we are starting to see some signs of progress. And tonight, just a few minutes ago, um, the top commander of Ukraine, Zaluzhny, said, to, uh, said that he had a call with the U.S.'s Mark Milley, General Mark Milley, the chi chief of general staffs. And he apparently said that, um, that Ukraine has now seized the strategic initiative and is making progress. Making progress. That's huge. All right, Patrick Rievel, our thanks to you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.